In this video, we're going to cover the Z sphere transformation type. This transformation type allows you to move Z spheres, snap them to the grid, scale them, add new Z spheres, and delete Z existing Z spheres. Also, uh, it allows you to rotate them. So let's get into it. Before we start, I'd like to talk about some considerations when using this plugin. And the first one is if you run into any errors telling you that you are out of memory, you can go to preferences, go navigate to mem and increase this compact mem uh, slider. This will get you rid of any errors. And that can happen even if you're not using this plugin. If just working with Zspheres, you may run out, uh, come, up, come across that error where you run out of memory. So that will fix that. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're working with Zspheres in a programmatically way, uh, like we're going to do with this plugin, a uh, grid side of 16 centimeters, 16 ZBrush units, let's put it this way, is the maximum grid side you can use uh, to add or transform or move Zspheres around using Zscript. So these would be the maximum grid size you could use when you're using uh, Zspheres. So one thing to counter that that you can do, and I strongly advise you that you do that, is remember we have we need a 10 grid size to use millimeters. So use millimeters instead of centimeters when you're creating your Z spheres, and this will give you uh, a lot more room to work with, and you can add a lot more Z spheres this way. Now Z spheres are view dependent. So if you're going to add a Z-Sphere and you don't have a view set, it will tell you that you need to uh, select a view first. So I'm going to select the front view here. And once you select a view, if you try to run any Z-Sphere operation, you'll get this message saying that if there's no Z-Sphere present, obviously, you'll get this message. You can say yes, and it will insert a Z-Sphere for you. So if I just hide my other subtool, now I got a Z-Sphere to start working with. The Z-Sphere transformations, they work with grid units. So we have the nudge settings down here with the grid units. Because I'm using millimeters, I'm just gonna go into millimeters and I'm gonna press this button here. We have scale and this can scale the grid, scale a Z-Sphere up or down. So I'll press this guy and this guy will set the scale to one grid unit here. And now my Z-sphere is one millimeter in size. So if I just zoom in here, there's my Z-sphere, one millimeter in size. And as you can see, we have a lot of room to create whatever we like with the grid size. And this grid size is only a 10 grid size so that we can see the millimeters. But you can also use a 16 grid size and use millimeters here instead. With that said, Let's start looking at all these controls and what do they do and how do, we, do they interact with each other. Let's first talk about these controls here. They control positioning and snapping. So if, for example, I go into move mode and I click my Z-sphere here. Now the last clicked Z-sphere is the one that will be affected. So if I go up, down, right, and if I move this Z-sphere, if I move this Z-sphere here, for example, and I press this middle one, it will snap my Z-sphere to the grid. Now, if you look down here at the affected Z-spheres, we can affect the selected Z-sphere only, the children of the Z-sphere, and we can also use the polygroups. So any Z-sphere from the same polygroup with the same color will be affected. And we can also use all. Now, polygroup and all, they ignore symmetry, so they don't work with symmetry, but children in selected, these ones work with symmetry. So if, for example, I press X and you can see that my X symmetry is on and I make the Z-sphere go here and this, you'll see what happens. As you can see, the other one, is uh, the symmetry is respected and the other one moves accordingly. You can also use two Z-sphere modes and now the bottom ones should move as well, as you can see. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these transformations, they work in a 2D plane. As you can, uh, we right now are working with the X and Y plane because we are in the front view. You can see here, we're working in the X and Y plane. If I change, for example, for a left view, 
here we're working with the Y and Z plane. So keep that in mind uh, when you're using symmetry for Z spheres. Now one thing, another thing that I would like to refer to these three buttons here for symmetry is if I just show you what's happening here in the transform tab, you can see that X and Y is on. So if I turn Y off and I turn the three off, uh, symmetry turns off. So as soon as I turn one off, symmetry turns back on again. And I'm just gonna close this transformation type here. And uh, let's look at children. So if I select, for example, this Z sphere here, and I'm just gonna turn symmetry off for now. And I press children. What children does, it's it's going to move this currently uh, active um, Z sphere, which is this one as well as all its children. So any z-sphere that is connected to it, not the previous z-sphere. So you can see these uh, kind of arrows here, the bones here, uh, they indicate which one is the parent and in which one is the child. So this one is the parent of this one, and this one is the parent of this one and this one. So all these children, so all of these guys are his children. So they're not their direct children, they're children of his children, but this is how it works. If I select children and I move, it will move my Z-sphere and all his children along with it. So as you can see, moving up and back down again. And this mode respects symmetry. So if I press X and Y and I move these guys like so, everything moves along with it. Before I get to polygroup and all, I would like to talk about masking. So the plugin also respects masking. So if I now press X and Y and do the same operation with this area masked, everything moves but the masked area. Now let's look at polygroup. If I press polygroup and I select one of these Z-spheres, as you can see, all these blue are from the same polygroup. So if I move these down, all from the same polygroup will have the same transformation. Now remember, this ignores symmetry. So if you have symmetry on, it's still going to work in the same way. And then of course we have all. And if I just mask some of these spheres out, and with all selected, if I press up, only the Z spheres that are not masked will move. Now all these four modes, are exactly the same when you're using scale or when you're using add remove z spheres and we'll get to that in a second but they do not affect rotation rotation behaves in a different way rotation behaves uh, similar to children so if I and it respects symmetry as well so for example if I click the z sphere here and I rotate all these children will rotate as you can see and if I have symmetry on Going back, turning these on, and I'll turn on this symmetry here, and I rotate, everything rotates symmetrically. And rotation also respects masking. Now if I turn back symmetry on, you can see that rotation also respects masking. Now for this sphere rotation, you only have these guys here, and we talked about this in rotation. So if you want to know about this, just refer back to the rotation video. Remember that this is all view dependent. So I, I was rotating like that. If I just grab this guy here and I go to a different view, for example, left view, just turn on symmetry, turn off symmetry for now. And I rotate, it will rotate as, as so. Now let's look at creating and deleting Z spheres. And we can do that with these controls. So one thing I, I like to point out first is about this set last uh, switch. And when it's on and I create a Z sphere, so let me just take this down to two units. Now, first things first, when you create a Z sphere, its radius is gonna be exactly the same as the parent. So it's gonna have the same size as the parent, which you can obviously change using scale here, change the size of it bigger or smaller. Now when set last is, is selected, as you can see, this is the active Z-sphere. As I made those transformations right there, it was happening on this Z-sphere. So if I keep adding Z-spheres, I'll add Z-spheres to the last created Z-sphere. And if I press delete, I'll be deleting that Z-sphere. Now if set last is off 
and I add a Z sphere, then the next time I add a Z sphere, it's going to still add to the first selected Z sphere, as you can see here. I just undo that. Control Z. Now, one thing I'd like you to keep in mind is that, let me just turn off set lost. If I add a Z sphere, and I added a Z sphere right there, and I try to add another Z sphere on top of an existing Z sphere, it's not going to happen. It's not going to let me do that. Why? I integrated this into the system because ZBrush can crash if there's two Z spheres in the exact same location with the exact same radius. So this is a precaution and but you can at any time you can do this you can move it you can move a z-sphere on top of another z-sphere but you cannot create a z-sphere on top of another z-sphere of course it's never a good idea to have two z-spheres in the same location so i wouldn't advise you to do that i'm just going to turn on x and y symmetry here as you can see that's what's happening and i want to point out another thing when using symmetry for example here i have all these z spheres on and if i move i am moving this z sphere because it was the first created as you can see it's respecting what this z sphere uh, direction for example i have symmetry on and if i make this go down now this is all in the same place so if i go and move up i'm gonna have some crazy results because it's trying to grab the z-sphere on the other side and this is what happens so keep that in mind symmetry will work for example i transform this z-sphere and it will look at any z-sphere that it's in on the other side uh, when using symmetry if i select this one you can see that deleting respects symmetry as well so it will delete any uh, z-sphere that it's on the opposite x and opposite y direction now let's look at this auto zoom and auto zoom basically uh, presses the view again uh, every time you add or remove or move a Z sphere. So as you can see, it's zoomed in on the currently the, the Z spheres that we have at the moment. So I can keep changing things and it will adapt the screen to the size. Well, it will zoom in into the, the Z spheres that we have. I just delete that and that as you can see now this is very huge right there so it's quite a handy feature when you add ink and so that things like this don't happen they don't go off screen and then you don't know what you have on screen so you press having yeah, auto zoom on will allow you to always focus on what's going on in the screen finally let's look at this preview option and this is a live preview of an adaptive skin so if I just uh, create some Z spheres here, that's something to work with. And sometimes this happens. So I want this Z sphere, please. Okay. So I have some Z spheres going on here and I don't need symmetry anymore. I just want to see what preview does. And if I press preview, I get a preview of my adaptive skin and I get some options down here. So these are the same options you can find down here in Adaptive Skin. As you can see, the Adaptive Skin is, is on at the moment. You can also use Classic Skin options. If you have Preview off, you can come here, turn on Classic Skin and use some Classic Skin options if you like. Now, these are all uh, Live Preview settings. So if I change, for example, Density to 1, you can see that it updated automatically. And if I move my Dynamesh to zero, you can see it automate, uh, it updated the preview automatically. You also have Max Twist for individual Z spheres. When you have like twisted angles, you can use Max Twist and push that down a little bit and try to fix those errors. Now down here, you can make adaptive skin and you also have a switch that says clean. Now this switch will remove extra edges, edges that you don't actually need. Now let me go back here to my subtools and see what's gonna go, what's gonna happen. Now you know that when you press Make Adaptive Skin, it will down there. It will give you a new subtool 
a new tool actually and then you have to copy this the tool or insert it back into uh, where you were working at uh, with this make adaptive skin it will simply create a new sub tool as you can see there if i just mute and we're ready to go with that it gives you skin of the z sphere queue right there so fast easy way to use that and now if i just go back to my z spheres again and i check out my preview again and i use this clean function and press make adaptive skin now this time I get a cleaner version with less edges as you can see there's not so many uh, edge loops going around and you get a lot less points using this system now in preview mode you can still manipulate your z-spheres which means that for example let me just you can't select z-spheres in preview mode but you have something to help with that which is the z-sphere select next z-sphere and previous z-sphere so for example now i selected that z-sphere and i move up that's the selected one as you can see if i press the next z-sphere is going to select the child of that z-sphere so if now i move up you can see that that is the currently selected z-sphere and if i go back and uh, there we go and back again there we go so this is helpful when you're using preview so if I select next, I should be using this sphere right here. And in preview, you can also use the modifications here. You cannot select these spheres, but you can use the modification. So I press twice, so it went to this one and then back to this one. As you can see, it's moving that one. And I can still add these spheres in this mode. This obviously, this is respect symmetry as well. So you can use that to your advantage. Now, if you want to start fresh and clean and you want to delete everything, you can just select all, press this delete button, and it will delete every Z sphere apart from the first Z sphere, Z sphere zero, this one. That never gets deleted, obviously, because it can crash the ZBrush if it does. And finally, I just want to talk about radial symmetry. As you can see, we don't have radial symmetry here. It just have X, Y, and Z, because the script doesn't work with radial symmetry. And if I activate radial symmetry here and I try to do something it's not gonna happen it gives me a note here saying sorry radial symmetry is not supported it may be in the future but at the moment it's not but I can still work with radial symmetry and the tool bag for example if I if I add some stuff here and go into draw mode here if I add some Z spheres here just move them out a little bit. I have to turn off uh, radial symmetry if I still want to work with symmetry within the plugin. Let's check it out. When you do, when you add a z-sphere at the same time as another z-sphere, they all get the same polygroup. As you can see here, they're all the same color. They're all the same polygroup. And we can work with polygroups right here. So if I select one of these guys and I select polygroup, and for example, I add z-sphere up it will add a z-sphere to all of these guys that are from the same polygroup as you can see so you kind of can work with symmetry with um, with the plugin uh, using polygroups and of course you also can mask stuff and and move stuff by using the all and polygroup and any of these modes okay so i pretty much uh, i think i've covered it all and i hope you you enjoyed this new addition to the tool bag and I'll see you in the next video.